It is February the 27th, 2021, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back with another episode. I'm Chris, there's Ima, there's Adrian, and Jeremiah. Hello. Hello. Ciao, Bella. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, so let's see. We um we came up with a task for this episode. We gave each other the task to take a photo, which is not that unusual. But <laughs> it doesn't sound that hard. So it doesn't sound that hard. But uh, there was yeah. one qualifier. One qualifier. Whose idea was this? Um, I don't even trying remember. to figure out who to blame. I don't know, but it tur- yeah, Jeremiah. <laughs> there Jeremiah we go. Is <laughs> Um, no, it, it turned out it turned out the qual- the qualifier was uh, without a camera, which includes yes. your phone things. And um, this was exciting because, especially <laughs> when you'll see the results, because every single one of us came up with a different method of doing it. We, we didn't really discuss how we would do it, so uh, we'll we'll have a look at those pictures pictures well let's let's discuss let's 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 see if we can even call them photos um that's right are they photos if they don't use light lenses and well do they do they use lenses some of them i think Mm. did so um Mm. there's there's i mean photography goes back to a time when photography was fo- lensless, which it was cameraless. Uh, of course, uh, the classical photogram, you put a, a, a leaf of a, bla- of a plant on a piece of photo paper and put it out in the sun and you have a photo of, of that mm. piece of, well, not a photo in the sense, but uh, at least a silhouette of something. So photograms. A representation. Yeah. A representation. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's the right term. Um, a simulacrum. A simulacrum. Okay. <laughs> there's there's other other ways like there's I've, I, I looked around. There's the chemigram. There's people using mm. chemistry. Well, what's a chemigram? I don't yeah, know what one of those is. You just you just paint chemistry on the film or on the paper. That and sounds very interesting. You can I've never done do that. you can take make pictures this way. There's of course ah. con- contact prints, but then you that's a photogram pretty much, but with a negative. Mm. Uh, and so on. So there's a lot of ways to get a photo, to bring a photo into this world without using a photo or a camera. So, yeah, we, I, n- none of us went the chemical route, right? No, no I certainly didn't. No, nope. no, me neither. Um, no. So, so we, we didn't go that route, but we used a few others um, to do it. And... I think we'll just kick this off with a show and tell and uh, see what we all did, and then let's. Yeah, that'd be uh, fun. Let's I mean, it's, you know, you know what's interesting is to discuss as we move along is the nature of uh, how we respond to images yeah. as photographs. Yes. Mm. Without them use, without those images being used by cameras, when we look at hyperrealistic paintings most or many of them done as recreations with paint of photographs. So their DNA are photographic. And when we see them photographed and displayed on the screen, they look instantly like a photo. And then we have to, in other words, generationally, we look at the photo, then we look at the painting, then we look at what inspired it. And so As we move forward in technology, the whole response to image making, uh, which we ascribe to photography, changes, shifts, uh, but is all in the interest of some realism uh, or something based on uh, realism. And I I think that's uh, interesting, especially when those of us start to work abstractly. (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) Abstraction. There we go again. (laughs) Um, <laughs> abstraction without a camera is probably not that hard, I would think. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I imagine. And of course, we're moving into into this time where where the, the boundaries are shifting, where uh, they are they're, they're being broken up, and of course, we're talking about computational things in photography that might add things to a photo to make it better, to make it sharper, to make it. Uh, whichever way 
but um, that doesn't originate from that photo or from another photo. There's um, machine learning that tries to understand how, I don't know, feathers on a bird look, and if they're not well exposed or not well uh, well resolved Detailed? in a photo, then, then you end up, uh, there's software now that will fill in the blank by just knowing what a bird bird's feather will look like in detail mm. so and conversely ai and in, in in many different software applications when you remove object or select subject uh, the computation reads its context and yes. then goes oh you don't want this uh i know what's around it and then sometimes to uh great fails and sometimes to great successes mm -hmm. replaces it with the boundaries around Yep. Um, so and that, there are ap applications like <laughs> Topaz that actually go, uh, I'm going to spend all my GPU or CPU power just defining the boundary between <laughs> what you want to keep. Which is the hardest to thing to do. I've talked to, um, on, a, on a photo workshop, I had a participant who worked for Qualcomm, <clears throat> who's one of the big chip manufacturers. And of course, uh, Qualcomm chips are in probably most Android phones nowadays. And of course they have uh, parts of the chip that is dedicated to processing photos. And um, we had some interesting discussion about how difficult it is to find those boundaries and to define them well. I mean, we're talking the boundary as simple as uh, between the sky and, uh, and a tree, right? That's not hard yeah. to distinguish, but if you are a computer chip, then there is a good chance that this will be a very hard task and that uh, you'll botch it up. There's software out there, um, which played with one agent that that uh, apparently allows you or that's supposed to allow you to uh, independently change the sky from trees, from landscapes, from uh, people. Uh, so you can make the sky more dramatic while not touching the tree that is in front of that sky. And it I'm not I'm gonna I'm not gonna name the name of the software, but um it was no per se I that wasn't Topaz, mm. no. Um, no. It was a, it was because that works very well. Yeah, but but that one was uh, a smartphone app, and the, and its AI wasn't trained well, so mm -hmm. you end up with like really weird artifacts where those yeah. two yeah. layers meet. So yeah. uh, it's interesting. So I'm keen to hear. I'm keen to hear what we've made of this challenge or this this assignment or yes. whatever you want to call it for this week. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Let's see, let's see what we've got, because this so, is going to be really interesting. Here are our results. And um, uh, um, we have, not all of us have posted one photo. I've posted three. Imar has posted four. Adrian didn't post a photo at all, but something else. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll start with Jeremiah and his photo of, what is it, an eagle? It's, no, you well, tell it's me. A man, it's, a ma it's a man with a, an eagle on his shoulder. Yes. It, ah, it looks there like we one go. of those evil right. statues from Doctor Who, actually, that come and kill you and take you back in time. <laughs> Weeping at. angels. Yeah, there, there you go. See another Doctor Who fan. It's oh, the, my God, I love it. <laughs> it's the perspective from below that makes it very overbearing, very, like, powerful. That's mm. The sun being right behind it, um, a bit of a tree, gives a little bit of context. Looks like olive. He's got a, a, a Roman emperor kind of buzz about him. Yeah, you got it. Yes. Uh, is, is it from well, a kind it, of a Roman? In fact, it's more game. Greek, but but uh, you're, Greek. You're, you okay, know, you're there by. I'm on the right path. Maybe 800 years, but but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but That's but, close enough. That's enough. That's close enough in our today's context. Um, yeah, this. This work, um, which which I did originally for this challenge, uh, it wasn't something that was just lying around. Um, I, I I felt um, it connects. I don't think I've ever really uh, showed the kind of work that I have uh, digitally on my website or part of what I have. Um, this this work originated um, in uh, let's see, Assassin's. Read uh, yeah, Odyssey. Yeah, it's so it's in game shot. photography. Mm -hmm. So it's in game oh, photography. By the way, stop, stop. Let me stop you for a second before we continue. If, uh, if anyone's just listening to this, not watching on video, we have links in the show notes um, to the photos, especially our, um, our main repository, tfttf.com slash tfop photos. Again, it's linked in the description. So if you want to watch along while we talk, or you watch the video and then it's also there. So sorry. Yeah, or, yeah you could Creed. also 
you could you could listen to the podcast, remember everything we've said, and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're driving, that's probably the best option. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it began in Assassin's Creed, and, and uh, this is not uh, in any way associated with the gameplay. It, it, it's just moving around through the uh, environments. So does, does Assassin's I, Creed have a, have a free motion mode, like a god mode where you can go everywhere, or not really? More, not really. You, you, you can move around uh, reasonably freely freely uh once you get the hang of how to navigate and where ah, to go um so i would say yes and no but so i i move around in it um i was very interested in capturing um this hawk or eagle whatever it is and 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 um it landed on this man's shoulder it did that using ai and and so Uh, you never know how long it's going to stay there, and I had to kind of just navigate um, quietly. <laughs> if you know, what are I mean. you are you a <laughs> participant in that game? So would the AI possibly react to you being there? Yeah. Or okay, yes. so so you're not an invisible yeah. entity that's just no, hovering not, there. Okay, n not at all, which makes it very ch uh, challenging. And so you're, you're and like also, a real photographer in a real scene, pretty much. Ab absolutely, mm -hmm. and I do this uh, w with whatever I'm exploring, whatever game uh, I'm exploring. Internally. Does it have a photo function, or is that a screenshot? Uh, most new games have a photo function yeah. now. Um, I think. Is that not technically using a camera then? <laughs> <laughs> <And> cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> uh, uh, originally, I started. Sounds a lot like it to me. <laughs> or, originally, I started to uh, do screen captures. Are screen captures uh, photography? No, they just uh, freeze digits. Um, and there's no uh, lens involved. That's <laughs> just put it that way. No lens involved, and there's no film involved. And um, anyway, so I captured this. Uh, after that, I brought it uh, into Photoshop. I used a combination of, of Photoshop, something that I use, uh, a plugin called Boris, which is an effects um, uh, suite. Generally, we use it special effects, but I have a plugin for Photoshop. It's very, very um, adept at controlling tonality and whatnot. Um, I layered this. I bloomed the sun. Um, I wanted to create an abstraction that was impressionistic of the time. I wanted it to have that kind of gray on gray look. Um, even the whites are slightly gray. Um, and just kind of do a br brooding kind of uh, um, impressionist image of this that that I'm happy Emar just felt the period of it, you know. Um, it's, you know, obviously it starts as color. Um, there's grain in here. So there's, you know, there is work involved to get this uh, to where you see it. Um, so I admit that most of the work was not in the, in the capture, though it is tricky to capture, not unlike just, ca you know, capturing with your camera on the street. Mm -mm. Um, but um, I enjoy working with my, you know, Wacom tablet and painting and layering and doing the work that I do. So it's as much about painting and using technology as it is uh, photography. But the initial impression is that it's a still image. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it works. And, and it, it, cool. it, it conveys an emotion. And I think that's... Um, That makes it that makes it a valid photo for me. <laughs> me I like I like that a lot actually because it doesn't. Yeah, look, I like it a lot. It, uh, like a lot of the stuff, I know you work hard, Jeremiah, to make it look that it's not shot in a, a game or in a simulated environment. I know that's that's a part of your process, and you've certainly achieved it with that one. Um, it's an interesting angle um, as well. I can yeah, I can imagine your virtual photographer sort of mm. crouched down at the foot Stealthy. of the man looking up <laughs> at the bird on his shoulder and something and, like that yeah it's definitely definitely a kind of like in your face street photography vibe about it from that sort of point of view <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and by crouched i mean using my joystick <laughs> yes well yeah and the c key for crouch yeah exactly um <laughs> yeah. let's move on to what emar did i see ivy oh dear 
Okay, there is nothing done to these. So this week, I well, I picked ivy just because I've been kind of photographing it out in my back garden. And you, you'll have to tell me when I when I can um, fo- go to the next photo because there's four in total. Yeah, this is just my results that I got from sticking some ivy into the really crappy scanner that we have in work <laughs> because I literally could not think of anything. I kind of I thought of the photo collage thing, but a little too late. And and I thought that was a little bit cheaty, so I uh, because I would have had to cheated. use my phone for it. <laughs> so I, I I didn't use anything. The only way I used my phone for this was that I emailed these um, scans back to my. No, phone. you didn't. I don't think you cheated. Uh, you know, we did not talk about any post no, processing or editing. Actually, here, no, right? I did nothing. So I did nothing to so these. these. So you're, you're um, yeah, there's a couple that I I scanned it as text. And I kind of like that. That's amazing. Interesting. So, yeah. so, you know what's so interesting is this. Um, it's like using film. It has the processing built in by choosing the mode. Yeah, I just, you could, you know, choose an, if you were scanning a photo or obviously it didn't have scan out. By the way, if we were um, getting into <laughs> the weeds, we could so. technically accuse this machine of having a lens. Uh, well, but, if you take it apart, it certainly <laughs> does have at least one lens. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I think these are uh, close to what Chris was talking about in terms of... Uh, you know, if chemical he, prints and exactly. Early photography, I, I thought, I like, think, I would yeah. love to do a photogram. I've gotten zero access to like photography paper or chemicals or anything in the middle of a pandemic. So, um, you use what you have. I, I edited one. I just couldn't resist, and actually, I've been at the other one since. And yeah, th- this it it does lovely things when you <laughs> apply different effects. These would make textures. beautiful. Prints, is, yes. wouldn't they? Yes, mm. no question. I, I agree. I think print, the other one's even nicer, actually. Especially so. printed on uh, a matte paper with absorbent mm. uh, qualities. And, oh, I and like a that sort of velvety ink. look, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. So, so I, I would encourage. That. So if if we're pedantic, this is probably the closest thing to a camera so far. Mm. Let's see what. <laughs> yeah, I think it. Can, I think we can cut Ema some slack here. I think, I think especially with the, especially with, with with how nice the outcome is, right? So, so yeah, I agree that I love the fact that almost everything in this image that we're looking at right now is just green. It's just various different types of green, and I think that's really nice. I'm not complaining at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so, for those just listening, this is you know this is uh, leaves on on, on a scanner. A scanner. Uh, and uh, leaves, leaves and berries, berries on, a on a scanner, scanner scanned it, uh, on text. I could not stop the bleed, the light bleed. I even tried to black out, like I put a, a, a blanket on top of the scanner. Yeah, yeah. To Can I tell you a trick? It, but it Emer, just didn't work. Here's yeah, a trick yeah, for yeah, scanning yeah. photography. Uh, mm-hmm. You build a small cardboard box the size of the plate, painted black, spray painted black, oh, and just okay. place it over the glass when it scans and you'll get a beautiful result lovely there we go Mm, i must learn something or white Mm. there we go so adrian you sent us a video (laughs) i have made i have made a video do do you want to do you want to give us some information before i play it Sure. Yeah. Well, actually, in part, Chris, this is inspired by some stuff that you've talked about, because in the in, in the past, we've had conversations about, you know, what are what are some of the potential consequences of, of our whole world being photographed every five seconds everywhere and all of that being available in the public domain? Uh, and uh, well, if not legally in the public domain, at least available to the public and proprietary websites like Facebook and Instagram. So uh, I would, yeah, when we, we thought about this, I thought, well, I don't know about, I don't know how we uh, to create an image without a camera, a photograph without a camera. But we were talking about beyond, we also talked when we set this up about going beyond phones and what happened, you know, so, so what, what is the sort of the future of, of photography in that sense, beyond all of these devices we carry around with us. Um, and I was reminded that uh, you sometimes talk about photo archaeology. And I thought, I wonder if I could piece together a a day in a life, you know, maybe there's an event in the past that is uh, that that, that was photographed sufficiently that I I could put together a 
you know, a, a compilation of something and make something out of that. And then, then I, uh, then I ended up going down a rabbit hole a bit <laughs> and I started looking for, um, for some reason, I, I started looking for live webcams um, and I found a place which is absolutely chock full of live webcams. Um, it's a town called Jackson and it's in Wyoming. Um, otherwise known as Jackson Hole. I, the, the town on the map is just called Jackson, but I think the general area is called Jackson Hole or something. Jackson like Hole is the uh, ski mountain that's adjacent to Jackson, Wyoming. Yeah, is or it Jackson Hole? They call it the same thing. It's ah, where Dick. Okay. It's where Dick Cheney lives. It's, is it really? I oh. have no idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that um, uh, why? Why? Uh, why? Okay. Well, why they There's... call a mountain a hole? I don't know. But okay. <laughs> So, so, so should we should we just take a look at it at your vacation footage? Sure. Okay, let's. Yeah, do there's that. a thirty a thirty something second video. Okay, let, let me play it in three, two, one. Here we go. <laughs> That's some good driving music. Yeah. And these are all live cams. come back soon <laughs> it's amazing by the way you, you did choose a good place because i think uh statistically i may be be wrong about this but but it's definitely on the higher end of more uh billionaires per square mile oh is it i, I have it, I, I i i knew the name i sort of well, i i i knew the yeah, name jackson, jackson hole, hole. i'd heard it before but i know nothing about the place and i just so i was searching what i was looking for was you know destinations i suppose you could say yeah uh, good one. That i could virtually travel to that would have loads of live webcams that i could record the footage from uh and compile that into a holiday video and yeah it if works. i couldn't I get an it event it's great it's, it's great yeah oh, i think it's great yeah. uh and oh man i could you could watch these things forever even in the middle of the night when there's nothing going on because of course you know part, if i was if i was um looking at these things in the morning in the uk of course it's the middle of the night in wyoming and and you know even if there's nothing going on at all it's like and then and then you'll get there and you'll see that the time stamp on it um uh is is 4 a.m and there's somebody driving on the street and you think, well, what <laughs> are they exciting, doing how what are they doing they must be like gangsters or, or or a doctor on an emergency <laughs> Secure, or something like that security guard on Quite an possible. estate <laughs> yeah so you know maybe but you're telling yourself new stories there wow so. I hope I was hoping to be able to pull together a narrative, um, and I uh, so in in some ways this this video is a proof of concept. I reckon there's sufficient <laughs> coverage uh, of that particular place that you could create a narrative short movie if you had enough footage. Uh -huh. um, you know, there's one scene. I'm not sure if it made the edit or not, but there's there's a scene at the bottom. I don't think it did. The scene at the bottom of uh, the the gondola. Uh, at the bottom of the mountain and and somebody skis in and stands there for about two seconds just falls flat over <laughs> and it's just all these little all these little life moments that can make you chuckle or, or people crossing a road in a hurry and you're thinking where are they going what are they doing you know so you can you can so decide based, based on the footage you can decide if you want to do like a drama or a slapstick movie or yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think if you'd need you'd, it, would take quite some dedication in the editing, right? I think because <laughs> you're essentially pulling. I mean, the, 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 around this town and the and the local area, there must be some twenty something, you know, uh, live webcam feeds running twenty four seven. Have Has anybody uh, seen uh, "What's Up, Tiger Lily"? Does that no, ring a bell? I know the name. I've not seen it. I don't think the, this is. Uh, I think it's Woody Allen's very first movie. Um, and, uh, it, he basically bought the rights to a Chinese, Taiwanese or Japanese film, some Asian film that is kind of cheap and cheerful and nonsensical and completely dubbed it Oh, okay. <laughs> in, in, with actors and whatnot <laughs> to completely transform it. And, uh, as I recall, I haven't seen it probably since I was in university, but, uh, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. You could do the same thing with your footage as so, people narrating. So I, that's, I, that's interesting. 
I, I think I think I think uh, this this feels like a horrible job to edit because um, I'm just trying to imagine uh, to have to edit a documentary that I didn't shoot myself, so I don't know what's there. So I have to really mm. watch everything and not just remember what I shot where. That must be sure. a, a nightmare sure. to edit. It, it was it was even yeah you know, a little bit challenging doing just that little tiny thing that I've just done now. I mean, I needed a shot list. I need to pull together a shot list, yeah, you know, to, to make the edit because I mean the shot list only had about a dozen entries on it. But you know, because because there's just so much stuff and it's so random, you just have to think. Okay, well at least you know I, I thought well I'll, I'll do a little cu couple of map animations and and I'll have an overnight bit in the middle of it so it looks like it's two days I was there for and stuff like that so I had a few thoughts around putting together a, a little narrative but how long did that take to, to put pretty, together uh the the edit was uh probably under an hour but probably nearly an hour to um it's you know uh the 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 footage was recorded uh, j just in in snippets, I do sort of half an hour here, half an hour there. It was it probably recorded over a period of about two or three days. Um, in fact, yeah, and and but 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 was a, was was a joy because you just get sucked down the rabbit hole. So I didn't really notice the time <laughs> that I was putting into just you know watching these live cams. And sometimes they'd be doing nothing, so absolutely nothing going on. You know, nobody there, nothing going on. You still sit there and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a new hobby. In a way, now, I wouldn't have done saying? with recorded footage. Yeah, you could put some very eerie music on the night scenes. Uh -huh. Just very, mm, something's <laughs> about to happen. It, I, 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 kind of thing. I, I was thinking quite hard about what music bed to put under it. Um, in the end, I just went with something lighthearted because I didn't have time to do something. Yeah, you know, if I was going to do something darker, I'd want to make it a bit more narrative, like, like you know, Bernard Herrmann. <laughs> ah, <laughs> okay. For those of Anyway, for those of you who are not familiar with Bernard Herrmann, he did the music for Psycho and a there lot of go. other Hitchcock <laughs> films. There we go. See. Yeah. Ah, let us move on. Um, here's here's uh, my little stint. I went on a little virtual vacation as well. I went to the sea and <laughs> uh, tried to do some landscape photography. And um, um, I don't remember the name weird. of the place, but uh, it's got some Is this nice Google? <clears throat> no, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't find those. No, no. I made those. Um, it this, looks really oh, weird. Nice. This is one. I have. A, I have another one here. Doesn't a bit of a river scene there. So that's like uh, greenery and rocks and river and so on. And then a third one, which is um, straight out to the sea into the sunset. So, so uh, you put bits together, did you? No. Tell us about the process. No, I didn't. How? Are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, this actually goes back to um, the Future of Photography episode seventy-four, which was uh, just Adrian and myself, and uh, we discussed a tool, um, a computational tool. I went full computational here, which mm. um, let me just go back so you have, a, you have a bit of a look. And yes, they do. They do look a bit weird. Yes, they do. Um, something really something slightly off. unsettling unsettling yeah. right um, yeah and it is a, it is a tool by Nvidia called Gogan like the painter oh, yeah. but uh, go G A N for uh, for the technology behind it and what you do uh, is the, 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 yeah, okay, what yeah. you do is you paint on the left side oh, what nice. you see is you paint I remember this what yeah you, I remember this actually let me make this a bit smaller so you can see the menu on the side so 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 there's a menu and it tells you it, it lets you choose oh. what to paint like landscape do i want rocks sea sky snow and oh, then you paint that okay. as a color and then the system compu computes a picture out of out of your rough wow. sketch there and it is very hit or miss it it really uh, this this took That's me mad. many many tries um let me bring up the other one so so one for the, the benefit of people that can't see it in real time you've got a, a i guess a browser interface and you can paint yep. splodges of color and the yeah, splodges like, of color yeah. represent different features like water or yep. cloud or Green greenery for, or for, for something or brown for for rocks and and blue for water and that kind of stuff yeah. and then it transforms that into that in in um <laughs> 
in conjunction with what else is there. So these things do interact with each other. And uh, those are the best <laughs> examples. There are some really bad ones. I didn't even put them on here because you, you'd instantly go, that's 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 impossible. <laughs> um, so the the last one again. This is the I'd one like I'm most. I'd like to see most, some of the impossible ones. Yeah, you can try it. I will put a link in the show notes. So you can play mm. with this thing in your web browser. Um, again, it takes a few tries. You have to kind of sometimes use the same uh, the, the the same basic color image like that you painted and and run it several times to get different results and then. It's a bit, it's a bit random at times, but sometimes uh, <laughs> something really nice comes out. And yeah, so, just those. In so, for example, comparison. if you would would have painted the river and, and but changed the output to rocks, would the river theoretically have yes. transformed into rocks? You can go, you can go in and just replace that color of the river with mm. the rock color, and then it turns into a field of rocks. Yeah. And how does how does it technically handle the blending of all of these different disparate? It's oh. AI. I have no idea what it does. <laughs> badly, by the looks of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. in some cases. In yeah. some cases, it does it really badly. In some cases, it works. That's where really other nice. other technologies come into bear come to bear, right? Yeah. So that's what we've done. We've. Uh, I think that's uh, unbelievable. I and, think that's and, a really fun one. Yeah, well done. Yeah, I've never seen that. that. Very cool, well yeah. done. Yeah. Uh, I think it's great. I can't wait to start <laughs> screwing around with that. Yeah, <laughs> you'll, you'll get you'll get uh, you get you get annoyed with it pretty soon because it is. Oh yeah, I'm already <laughs> halfway there, but but it's going to be fun to try and get something <laughs> realistic out of so it. So we've had in-game <laughs> photography. We've had uh, Ivy on a scanner. We've had. Borrowed footage from uh, open webcams. Live and webcam. We've had uh, computational photos from painting splotches of color. Yeah, gener generated by scra from scratch. That's an interesting one. I, this I had forgotten was an about amazingly it. That fun exercise. I <laughs> say. It, it, it really it really is, and it also yeah, it uh, provokes good. a lot of thinking about how how would this feel. 10 years from now with the same challenge. Yeah. Oh, I'm, what, I'm interested in Chris's method actually, because, you know, something like that, you know, with, if, if it was developed, um, you could, could get really sophisticated with it in a 10 year period. I mean, you could be, mm. you know, I, I know, yeah, Jeremiah, you today work really, really hard to generate realistic looking landscapes in digital, you know, structures, don't you? I mean, you know, what if you could just paint a few blobs on the screen like that and it did it all for you? Would that be a good thing? Would that be a bad thing for your work? Uh, I think it would be a good thing. It's just a tool. Uh, I think the mm -hmm. whatever my intention is to create something, I'm not creating a random thing. I'm I'm going and I'm trying to create an emotional uh, foundation for whatever image that that I'm making. So whatever tools are available to me, I'm going to use. I, I never see the evolution of tools as being a negative. And and conversely, I don't have to use them, <laughs> right? Well, it would probably that. be a, it would probably brush. be a really good way to speed up workflow for you know yeah, large that, areas that, or well maybe you just you know, stuff can like make that. more stuff. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, honestly, the difference between that and a version of a clone stamp or a healing brush uh, for mm -hmm. those who work in Photoshop. Um, where you know you can sample an area, and every time you take your brush, it it will brush that area. Um, mm. That's a version of sort of training and memory and a application. Um, so you know, smart brushes, which is maybe what we're talking about here. Uh, that is, uh, they're evolving I incredibly. Uh, you know, I, I've been working on something lately where I'm, I'm. In fact, I, I don't know if I posted it, just one of my canal walk images on Instagram of just adding fog. I'll, I'll post it later, or maybe I'll put it up on TFOP. But there's a lot of brushwork in mist and fog um, on the canals, and, and getting that right with what we call jitter, which is you know an abstraction of how the how the brush works and, and how random it is. Well, mm -hmm. that's an AI calculation, you know, so that your brush strokes aren't exactly the same every time you use them. Every time you plant the brush down, it changes a certain form of it and you can adjust it. 
This is a software version writ large of the same notions. And, and mm, so that's um, interesting. I, I invite any <laughs> technologies into my house. I'd, I'd like to see what a geologist could do with that NVIDIA tool, actually. <laughs> right. Because because I think so, some of your images there, Chris, I would have to say that part of their uncanniness is that they are geologically uncanny. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd say, well, the, you, you don't have much choice. You have like a uh, uh, hill, mountain, and rock. I think that's the <laughs> distinction. You don't, don't have different <laughs> types of rock or anything. It'll just uh, <laughs> generate different kinds of rock. As, uh, you can't, can't generate a sandy beach then or anything like but that. Yes, no, you, you know, can. You can. Sort no, of. Uh, I, I would say, you know, you look at those pictures, and if Chris was inspired to take it to next level, uh, and mm. and sort of studied uh, oh there's there's a lot of these but something like Adobe Substance, uh, he could go and say I uh, you know there's a rock formation yeah. in Iceland that had you know black lava, but I don't want to just use black lava I want sort of oozing mud out of that black lava and you can create whatever natural substance. Mm based on real scans, photogrammetry scans, and combine them and, and texture them and add wetness and all kinds of reflective properties, and then create a brush yep. out of that and mm -hmm. actually paint that substance on the hillside. And I know this sounds rather complicated, and, and to some it may be or feel complicated, but it's not as complicated as what you would imagine and it's getting easier or, or more direct every year or you could fly to new zealand and find that beach and take <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> or you can just <laughs> capture it in a game <laughs> uh, let's go to the picks of the week Ooh, um, let's that see a, uh, I'll, I'll put mine first today and that is um a camera because we didn't oh use cameras, so I thought we'd have to use a <laughs> camera. Um, it's one that I just uh, came across recently. It's uh, by Insta360. Oops. Of course, you cannot Ooh. see it because something else is in the front. Here we... No. No. Almost. 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 Uh, here we go. It's the Insta360 Pro 2, which is a 360-degree camera the size of a... I don't even know. A small melon. Um, that shoots, I'm not even sure, 8K per camera or something. I mean, it's, a, it's wow. an amazing resolution. Uh, it's one of those tools that are for production. We're talking a steep price, of course. And um, if you've ever played with a little 360 camera, like a, like a, a Ricoh Theta or, or the other Insta360 cameras, this is kind of a, a proper... A production tool for VR, okay. for even even for just shooting everything at once and then just panning around the camera. It has stabilization built in. It does 360 VR live streaming in highest quality. It um, has spherical audio built in, which is kind of important when you want to do um, when you want to do these. Um, 360 VR things because it really helps if the audio comes from where you see it. Um, and yeah, it's one of those, it's an advancement of these little tools. And uh, if I had, let, let me check the, let me check the price. I want to see how much that thing is. If I had, high. yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is high. Here's the euro $6, prices. $6,000, I was, $6,000, I would if, say. If I had the standard version, 5,000 euros, I could buy one. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, all right. I wasn't far off then. No, oh, no, not too far off. So that was my yeah. pick because uh, it does look I like love a Star Wars pick. droid as well. Uh, Chris, I've I've put yeah. that in a file for my pick at a future episode. I I was really <laughs> dazzled by that uh, uh, particular camera. Looks I don't even know if I really good. had a good use for it right now, but um, um not not yet. But not yet. But it know. will come. It will come. You know, once a year you grab it, right? But mm. it's yeah. very expensive. It'd be nice to rent and one. I'll I think it'd be a good that. rental, that sort yeah, of thing, for a project. Yeah, it'd be a really good yeah. rental. Yeah. 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 So, Jeremiah, speaking of Jeremiah, we have a pick from you, which is... We do. What is it? What are we looking at? This is a... With pearly this is not one of yours, Jeremiah, is no, it? No. Not yet. I, <laughs> no. I kind of I know what it is, but... Uh, this is an image. It, it's a, uh, oh. what do you call it? 
a high quality, um, I'll call it a scan since we're talking about scans, a high quality scan of this painting. And it is, uh, I don't know if I can do this on, on but you can blow this up. Um, it, it's like a billion gigapixels. <laughs> like you can, you can just keep blowing this up. Yeah, keep going until you, I mean the yeah oh, you can see wow. the cracks in the I mean yeah. it is uh, an a, astounding Gorgeous. look at that <gasps> this is as far as it goes yeah well that's far enough <laughs> mm -hmm. um, wow. I, I I just thought that uh, it it is a um, a very impressive piece of work normally we see this in space photography and that kind of thing. And soon we will be mm. seeing this uh, at our neighborhood um, CCTVs, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Gigapixel CTTV, yeah, but, okay. But, but you could imagine uh, for those studying art and... and um, oh, and it has a 3D component wow. as well. So yeah, you, can see, so you the... can see the actual brush strokes and the, um, just the way this has been. That's amazing. It, it is truly an amazing. And yeah. I, I, I really uh, feel that our, our listeners, viewers, uh, should uh, spend a few uh, moments like uh, studying this be because wow. you, can, you, mm. can, you can feel um, the dynamic uh, work of an artist so that, here. Th this, this very close 3D zoom is very mm. interesting. I'm guessing yes. what mm. we're seeing there is is the uh the the layers of paint i'm i'm assuming it's an oil painting yeah um, canvas and too, yeah. uh irregularities and, and if you zoom in close enough you're seeing yeah the 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 texture in the paint almost as a as a landscape and the cracks mm. in the paint being big big rifts <laughs> big fault lines in that landscape yeah. Yeah. that's uh I tell you, that's quite incredible uh, i i guess that it'd be very very useful for um Detecting forgeries as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, would be. Yeah, because anyway. you couldn't for you couldn't forge at that level, could you? Really? <laughs> no, I don't mm. think so. Uh, well, now anyway, you can because uh, now you have a file <laughs> and you can treat you can three D print that. How about that? <laughs> no, there you go. You have high enough resolution <laughs> there. Um, mm -hmm. Adrian has given us. This website. I what is it? Pixels yeah. and green dots. This, this is a blog. zine. I received a zine in the post this week. Uh, that, you know, uh, it's called mm. Seascapes, and uh, it's come. Uh, it's come to us uh, from a listener, uh, a chap oh, called Bill Two, uh, who lives uh, wow. who lives in That's the Sydney cool. area, in Australia, somewhere near, uh, either near or in Sydney. Um, and he is a, a member of, of uh, a photo collective called Pixels and Grain, also known as, I think, as the Crazy Dawn Shooters or something like that. Uh, Crazy Morning Shooters, sorry, my mistake. Mm. And this is a fantastic scene called Seascapes, uh, which is, um, th this is, a, I think the story goes, it's essentially a bunch of guys who've kept themselves sane in 2020 by going out before dawn and, and meeting up in a, in a socially distanced and responsible way, you know, uh, oh. uh, down by the coast and, and and, uh, and taking photographs together so it's uh, um, and just wanted to say thank you very much Bill for sending me the zine it's great love it that's <laughs> very super. cool well done yeah and last but not least Imar has sent us something uh, chosen something, something else that is not a photo yeah. at all it's a poem. not a photo because I was thinking um, you know this whole idea of making an image without the camera made me think of oh my god what would I do without my phone, without my camera, and then without my eyes by extension? So it just made me think of uh, everybody knows the great James Heaney, I think, and most people probably know this poem. But in terms of its descriptive powers, I think it's maybe a cut above many. So if you just read this, I think you could make the pictures yeah, in your head. Yeah, that's fabulous. Oh, I like that. Is, I like that a lot. Me too. I like mm. that. And also that line in it that says um, as though as though you could catch it unless, where is it? Useless to think that you could park and capture it any better or more thoroughly. You know, mm. you couldn't. Nothing replaces uh, <sighs> the experience. Really, yeah, the experience. Yeah, I mean, all our photography, all our work is merely a representation of how we feel 
uh, in the world looking at it or, you know, uh, translating mm-hmm. it. Um, that's, you know, reduced to its, you know, most basic element. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that, that's the attraction. Uh, but it's, it's always a representation. It's never what it is. It uh, certainly yeah. is. Yeah. And maybe that's reality too. Well, it's, <laughs> we'll leave this open. We'll leave this open for discussion among the listeners. I think. Uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, this is this was so much fun. We have to do this again at one point. Maybe everyone in the audience can do this again. Adrian, we can't hear you. Are you talking? I am uh, sorry. I was on mute because there was a bit of noise in my gra- background here. But so I was just going to say, I've enjoyed making my holiday video this week. Yep. And I had no idea I was visiting the place where Dick Cheney lives. So there's that as well. There we go. Um, yeah, that was great fun. Yeah. yeah, check out the links in the show notes. Everything is there. So you can play with these tools yourself or just find webcams and stuff. We'll be back in a week. Until then, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 